Mein Liebe, better come here. Why are you wearing your German Halloween costume? Ich muss dir etwas sagen. Es war ein Schwäger und der in diesem Jahr und fliegt und fuck. Wir können die kleinen Klaas nicht futtern. Bitte gib in das. Es ist ein Bettelkart. Es tut mir leid. Your primary goal in Agricola is to turn your destitute wasteland of a farm into a farming utopia. This is accomplished by taking one of your family members from your personal player board and placing them on the main board to carry out that action. Agricola is played over 14 rounds divided into six stages. At the end of each stage, you are required to feed your family here, 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 here. You get the idea. Anywhere where it says harvest at the end of a stage, you're required to feed your family. Each family member is required to eat two food during every harvest. With the exception of babies, these newborn offspring will only require one food during the harvest phase if that was the round in which they were created. Please note that any newborn offspring are not able to carry out an action like other family members that turn. There are three core principles that you must follow in Agricola in order to have any kind of success. First, you want to get your food engine up and running. Then, you want to expand your family in order to have more turns per round. And finally, you want to diversify your farm. On the subject of food, there are spaces on the board that allow you to take food as an action, such as the fishing pond. However, these actions are a bit inconsistent in the return that you get, so sometimes it's better to actually have your own food production system going. Your best bet for creating a sustainable food system is to take the major or minor improvement space and then to pick up one of the major improvements. The fireplace and the cooking hearth are particularly good for food conversion. Notice on here the values for converting to food. Vegetables, sheep, wild boar, and cattle all have different quantities of food that are produced. You can produce food at any time during your turn. For example, cooking a vegetable in either one of these will yield you two or three foods respectively depending on whether you use the fireplace or cooking hearth. Be sure to carefully study the major improvements as each one may have a specific use depending on your strategy. Now that we've got our food engine going, let's grow our family in order to have more turns per round. To do so, place one of your family members on a family growth space. Provided that you build a house, you can now place this new family member in the house. Note, on that turn, that family member is not able to carry out any actions as they're considered a newborn offspring. Now onto the subject of diversifying your farm. So in order to build those fences and houses in order to hold your animals and your family members, you have to collect the raw materials needed to build those. So we have items like clay, reed, wood, and stone. Notice on the board, anything with a red arrow means that in between each round, if nobody takes those materials, they will accumulate. Even though we're talking about diversifying your farm in the third step here, oftentimes you're unable to carry out either expanding your family or getting your food engine going up because other players have blocked you out. If that's the case, use that time in order to pick up the most of these resources. When the board is initially seated, each stage is going to contain the same cards, but they may be out in different orders. But you're not going to know that because they're all turned upside down at the onset, and at the end of each round, you're going to flip over a new card. On this side of the board, we have the board constants that are available from the very beginning of the game. Notice the build room action here. That is a very important action in order to expand your family. Now, when building rooms into your home, you have to build rooms according to whatever your house is currently made out of. Every house at the beginning of the game starts as a wooden hut. Then, later on, you're able to take the renovate action and turn that old wooden hut into a nice clay home. You also have the plow field and take grain action here. Plowing a field allows you to put down a field here. Then, with that grain that you took, you may then take the sow action 
which will place the grain here, and from the bank, you'll get an additional two grain on top. At the end of every harvest, you will be able to take that top grain off as the first part of the harvest and put it in your supply. Note that grains are able to be eaten in a one-to-one -one ratio as if they were a piece of food, but your best play is going to be saving them for victory scoring at the end, as well as replanting them in fields later on. Note, once you've plowed a field, you'll have to plow next to it for the rest of your turns. You cannot do this. And if you want to build fences, you're going to need some wood. So, take the wood action, take the fences action, which will allow you to build pastures. Pastures, by default, can hold two animals per square. If you want to double that capacity, add a stable. Stables double the capacity of your pastures. So, if you have a one grid pasture, you can hold four with a stable. And if you had a two grid pasture, you could hold eight animals. To grab animals, simply place your family member on the space and take all the animals associated on that space. Notice that animal spaces have the red arrow, so they'll accumulate between rounds. Special note, regardless of how big your house is, you can have one animal living inside of your house. During the harvest phase, animals will breed. If you have at least two of that same animal, they will make one baby. Please note, even if you have more than the two, you're only going to be able to make one baby every breeding phase. At the start of the game, each player is going to be given seven minor improvements and seven occupation cards. These can be used as an action on the board, either through the occupation action to take the occupations. Minor improvements and occupations allow you to break certain rules in the game. Tailor your strategy around them, but be careful not to get too caught up in it. Sometimes there are better standard actions on the board. Let's look at the anatomy of the card. In order to place certain cards, you have to pay a resource cost. At the end of the game, some cards are worth in-game scoring points. And on some cards, you'll have bonuses. For instance, on this card, for so much read that you have acquired, you'll get bonus points. For every single piece of food that you're unable to feed your family members, you will incur a beggar's card. These are worth minus three at the end of the game. I can almost guarantee if you pick up any beggar's cards, you will not be able to win that game. After the final round and the final harvest, now it's time to collect up our scores. This is the point where I talked about diversifying your farm. You're actually going to score it like so. From fields and working your way all the way down to the family members, you're going to tally up the amount of items that you have as well as the points that are corresponding to it. Notice that any unused spaces are going to be negative points and anything that you don't possess is also going to be worth negative points. So in the end, did you achieve a complete utopia of a farm, or is it a barren wasteland and you'll be lucky to score 10 points? That's Agricola! Danke fürs Zuschauen! Your German stinks! <laughs>